Welcome. Welcome to our worship service this morning at 1025. This sure is unusual, isn't it? There's nobody in the sanctuary to join us as we worship together under our restrictions this morning here. But God's word assures us that where two or three are gathered, that he will be present with us. So you watching this as you're watching it, and me speaking on behalf of the Lord here, come. Let's go into worship and gather together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord invites us in worship to come together, to confess to him all of our sins and imperfections, so that we might hear his grace. The scriptures say, if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I ask you now, standing before the Lord's altar here, are you sorry for all the sins I have committed? If so, answer, I am. Do you repent of your sins and ask for our Lord's forgiveness? If so, answer, I do. Do you ask for the Lord's strength to help you to resist temptation and to live the type of life that God's word calls us to do? If so, answer, I will. I will then let's silently confess our sins for a moment before God, our Heavenly Father. God has heard our prayer, and God will answer our prayers. And as a called and ordained servant of the word, it's my joy to share with you now that all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is recorded for us from the Gospel of Matthew. Our scripture lesson for today is recorded for us in Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 25. Jesus' words to us encouraging us not to worry. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and victorious Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Anxiety was a way of life in the ancient world. We read in the scriptures and elsewhere that even back in the times when the Apostle Paul lived here, there were worldwide diseases and plagues here that would kill hundreds of thousands, even millions of people at one time. And additionally, there were invading armies that would come in and invade nations here, and they would kill tens of thousands of soldiers in each battle, leaving thousands of widows and tens of thousands of fatherless children. And finally, there was the fear imposed by pagan gods. The gods that the powerful Greeks and Romans worshipped here were seen as powerful and vengeful, and people lived in fear of them. Anxiety was a way of life in the ancient world, and anxiety is a way of life in our current world as well. The whole world right now is living with some fear of the COVID virus. My wife got a cold last Monday, and both of us, while we wouldn't admit it to each other here, were silently anxious that that might be the COVID virus. Right now, many of us are anxious about the future, short-term future and long-term future. Many people don't know if they're going to lose their jobs. 
People don't know if their company might go under. We don't know how we're going to pay our mortgage or pay off those credit card debts here. We're anxious about our children. When are the schools going to reopen? We're anxious about the possibility of a coming recession. We're anxious about being so anxious. And in our 1025 message last Tuesday, Pastor Aaron challenged us to memorize a Bible verse. And the Bible verse that I've memorized is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. During these past couple of weeks, during these past years, I found comfort and support from those two Bible verses. They begin with, do not worry about anything. Anything. Anything that concerns you. Anything that concerns your children. Anything that concerns your parents. Anything concerning your investments. Anything concerning how you're going to pay for your children's college here. Anything concerning your work or your income. Paul tells us, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. In everything, whatever comes to your mind, bring it to the Lord in prayer. Now, my worries seemingly strike me most often in the middle of the night, typically around three or four in the morning. It's still dark then. There's nothing to distract my attention. And while I don't like waking up, I'd much rather be sleeping soundly here, this has provided me with a wonderful prayer time. Because my worries soon stop when I start praying this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. Prayers, we typically understand them. Anyone from a tiny child to an elderly senior citizen understands the basic concepts of prayer. But as the Apostle Paul uses this word petition here in verse 6, most of us don't know what a petition truly is. And in the original Greek in which this was written, we actually see several different words combined into the one English word that's translated as petition. And most literally, those Greek words are this, a request for good favor. You know, my paraphrase, asking God for a good favor. In everything by prayer, asking God for a good favor, then present your request to God. This is so much like little children asking their parents for help. Mom or dad, would you help tie my shoes? Will you help wash me up from this scrape I just got on my elbow? God loves to hear us. We're his dear children. This is why he's given us this prayer, so that we can turn to him as our loving Heavenly Father here, so that he can give us these gifts, food, clothing, shelter, whatever. 
recovery from an illness, comfort for our loved ones, and most especially maybe for you right now, relief from your anxieties. Because this verse continues, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Friends, this isn't peace that I'm promising you. This isn't peace that the world can offer you. This is the peace of God. God's peace, which surpasses all understanding. Yeah. Nobody can grasp God's peace. Yeah. It transcends our minds. It's something no human being can understand. It grants you peace in the middle of the night. It grants you peace in the midst of life's storms or illnesses. It grants you peace that you can't understand. And then it does something else. It guards our hearts and minds. The Apostle Paul was in jail when he wrote this book. He was guarded by the toughest, the most best trained soldiers in the world. The Romans were known for the strength of their armies. Centurions were famous for their discipline and power. So St. Paul uses their word, guard, to tell us how God will guard us from all worries and anxieties. This comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So let me end with this, because it comes from the verse that immediately precedes these two verses we've been looking at today. The ancient Greeks and Romans thought that their gods lived far away, high above the earth where the humans lived, because they were so much greater than were people. These gods imposed justice. These gods struck the world with lightning and thunder. These gods were distant and to be avoided. But Philippians 4 verse 5, the verse that immediately precedes, do not be anxious about anything, says this, the Lord is near. Turning that around, do not be anxious about anything. The Lord is near. We can bring anything to God in prayer because God is always with us. His Holy Spirit dwells within our hearts. We can ask God for good favors because God will never leave us nor forsake us. We can find peace that passes all understanding because God is our heavenly Father, a Father who loves his children a father who protects us as his children, a father who wants us to live with joy and happiness in faith. My friends, don't be anxious. This COVID virus can't separate us from God's love. Neither the impacts that it's going to make upon our society, our culture, our nation, Nothing can separate us from the love of God which transforms us. Hence, today and in all the days moving forward, if you're feeling stress, anxiety, and worries, if you're not sleeping well through the night, if you're stressing about anything in life, God speaks to us today. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As part of our worship service here at Christ Victorious, following the sermon, to bring our gifts and our offerings to our Lord in grace for all the blessings that he gives us. And while we do not have offering plates, and I cannot distribute these to you this morning, we encourage you to continue to support the Lord's kingdom. If you would like to go to our website or click on the link below, we'll take you to CV Giving and you can give online, or you can send your offering to the Lord by mailing it here to our church. God loves it when we rejoice in thankfulness to his blessings. He's pleased by the praise that we offer. So let's continue now in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come to you. We lift you up. We lift up to you, Lord, all of our worries and anxieties. Thank you, Lord, for your promises that you will take them all away. For you are a God who loves and protects us. Lord, be with all those who are fighting this virus online the nurses, the doctors, the ambulance drivers, and the specialists. Protect them and their loved ones as they serve us. Lord, you are the great physician and healer. Lord, we pray that you would work your healing in everyone who is sick at this time. Protect us, Lord, and our loved ones from this virus, if this would be your will. And Lord, we pray that in our prayers that you would be with everyone in these uncertain times. Be with our children as they're learning from home. Be with everybody who's having to work from a social distance. Lord, especially grant wisdom to our president and our governor and all those in authority. Give them wisdom and discernment, Lord, to rule us in the way that you desire. Lord, we have so many things that we'll bring to you in these coming days in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the prayer that your dear son Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.